Revelation 8. We still don't know what the scroll says, but we know everyone who matters is in heaven waiting to find out. But the seventh seal is now going to be opened, and the band is ready to play. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and seven trumpets were given to them. Who thought that would be a good idea? Never give people trumpets. Was the silence not good enough for you? This is like married couples thinking they want a baby. Sure, it might sound nice, in theory, but ask any new parents a year after birth how much they miss silence and sex and being able to do whatever the hell they want any time they want, and they will start crying. What was happening for 30 minutes after the seventh seal was opened? The other seals unleashed death and destruction. Did they open number seven and just freak out when nothing changed? Did they think they did it wrong? Maybe that wasn't the right seal? At what point did everyone start to relax and think, oh, maybe this won't be so bad? Actually, after all the Christian chanting we heard about God, that silence had to feel amazing. Here's the thing about trumpets. When they blow, bad things will happen. First to the planet, then to everyone on the planet through demons. Like I said, trumpets were a bad idea. Another angel, who had a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense to offer, with the prayers of all God's people on the golden altar in front of the throne. The smoke of the incense, together with the prayers of God's people, went up before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and hurled it on the earth. And there came peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. A censer, by the way, is a metal vessel that holds ashes, and you can throw incense on it. But this angel has a golden one, because everyone in the Bible is like Donald Trump, and they need everything to be golden no matter how tacky it looks. This angel took the censer and threw it. Where? The earth which is the least specific way to answer that question. Who's the love of your life? Someone. What does that mean? Wherever it landed though, it caused thunder and lightning and an earthquake, even though that is not at all how those things are created. These people don't understand a thing about science, which we knew because they still believe in a flat four-sided earth. Do you all remember how there was a great earthquake after the sixth seal was opened? How bad could this one be? It's, it's gotta be less intense, right? Anyway, we already heard about the trumpets. They are like Chekhov's gun. You know they are getting blown. Then the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared to sound them. The first angel sounded his trumpet, and there came hail and fire mixed with blood, and it was hurled down on the earth. A third of the earth was burned up, a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. At this point, you would think they stopped blowing the trumpets. One song alone destroyed a third of the planet, and all the grass, and presumably entire ecosystems. And we have seven of these trumpets. If you're keeping score, and I think you should, one trumpet has created a famine by destroying a ton of vegetation and a good chunk of oxygen sources. Can someone explain to me why the sound of a trumpet would lead to hail and fire mixed with blood? Also, whose blood? Who died because someone played a trumpet? There are some Christians who believe that events of the 20th century corresponded with these trumpets. So this whole bit about the earth burning up and chaos from above sounds a lot like aerial assaults, including bombs during World War II. Just stick a pin in that and remember it. The second angel sounded his trumpet, and something like a huge mountain all ablaze was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea turned into blood, a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. Trumpet 2 destroyed a mountain by setting it on fire and hurling it into the sea. 
which is not how mountains or trumpets work. But don't worry, a third of the sea turned into blood. Just a third. It's like peeing in the pool, but somehow only affecting a third of the water. As if the lane markers can create a boundary in the water that stretches all the way down. The sea is fine, as long as you stay away from a third of it. Also, how many ships are there? There was Noah's Ark back in the day, but I didn't realize these people all knew how to build ships. I would like to know how big these ships were. Unlike Noah's, are they just normal size? This is the first time we're hearing about them, so I have questions. Quick history lesson. In 79 AD, Mount Vesuvius erupted. It was such a huge event that fire shot out. The sky looked like it turned black, lava poured down, tons of people died, and people far from Italy were able to see evidence of the eruption. Which is to say, I know these descriptions sound crazy, but the people alive at the time had very likely seen or heard about similar destruction not that long ago, so it didn't sound that weird to them. If you're looking for a more modern connection, some people say this describes the atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The third angel sounded his trumpet, and a great star blazing like a torch fell from the sky on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters turned bitter, and many people died from the waters that had become bitter. Trumpet 3 blew up a star which fell into a third of the rivers. Do you know how small a star would have to be to fall into some rivers? Our sun could hold about 1.3 million Earths by volume. And our sun is an average-sized star. This is how anti-scientific this book is. They think a star could fall into some of our planet, when the truth is a star crashing into our planet would obliterate everything. But at least the star had a first name, which is a detail we didn't need to know, but okay. Here's some medical advice for all of you. If a star falls in the water, don't drink it. It's probably bad for you. Please stick to the safe blood and pee water like you're used to. When they say a third of the waters turned bitter, is that the same third that was turned into blood? Because I would definitely avoid that stuff. I am not sure why they'd be drinking bitter blood water unless it's a different third, in which case, why didn't they get someone to test the rest of the water after the blood incident? What's the 20th century parallel that involves something bright falling down and poisoning water? Perhaps the nuclear disaster at Chernobyl in 1986, say some Christians who were desperate to find connections. The fourth angel sounded his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck a third of the moon and a third of the stars, so that a third of them turned dark. A third of the day was without light, and also a third of the night. I do love the idea of a third of the night not having light, because that makes me wonder what these people think happens during the other two-thirds of the night. But apparently you can just turn off a third of the sun and a third of the moon, which doesn't give off light, but okay. And a third of the stars, which only makes sense if you think there are a finite and relatively small number of them, which is not the case at all. If you killed off a third of the sun, it would be a third less intense, which would lower temperatures by a lot, which would destroy the ecosystem even more. But it's already been destroyed, so I don't know why I'm supposed to be worried now. Is it just me, or has the sun taken a lot of beatings in this book so far? The fractions are killing me here. I have no idea how much of the planet and the universe is still left, and I was a math major! And we have three more trumpets to blow! As for a more recent connection, some people might point to Saddam Hussein setting oil wells on fire in 1991, which blackened the sky with smoke. As I watched, I heard an eagle that was flying in midair call out in a loud voice, Whoa! 
Woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the trumpet blasts about to be sounded by the other three angels. That eagle knows what's up. There is some bad shit about to go down, but this talking eagle is doing a victory lap around the angels because this is not a warning. This is what Christians want. They want the world to be destroyed after they've been saved. Who is still living on the planet at this point? Especially now that the sun and the water and the trees are just useless. Are there people just going about their business despite all that? The thing about this chapter is the damage and destruction are quite literally apocalyptic. That's why when we talk about nuclear bombs and war, there is a not insignificant number of fundamentalist Christians who celebrate all that because it suggests we are getting closer to the end times, that the events in Revelation are playing out as prophesied. I still don't know what the scroll says, but it doesn't matter because the world is systematically getting torn apart by trumpets, which is something I could have told you in fifth grade when I began playing in the band.